but let's put everything on the table because I'm a lover of truth, because I'm a lover of truth. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect one, in whom my soul delights. La, 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 la. As for the servant of the Lord that was referenced in Isaiah 42 and 49, that cannot possibly be Muhammad for many reasons. First, as widely recognized by biblical scholars, based on internal evidence, the servant described in Isaiah 42 is the same servant described as in Isaiah 49, which we just heard. He's also described in the 50th chapter and 52, 13 through 53, 12. So according to these passages, the servant is actually identified with Israel. Isaiah 49, 3, because he embodies the nation of Israel. Was Muhammad identified with Israel? No. Was he an Israelite? No. Did he embody the mission of Israel? No. Did he have a primary mission, as Yeshua did, to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, first and foremost, to regather them? No. Muhammad did not have that mission. Jesus did. Actually, Isaiah chapter 40, um, to 43, uh, to 53, is speaking about two servants. It's speaking about the suffering servant, which is Israel, and then it's talking about a deliverer. And I'll give these passages. Moreover, even the Jews and many scholars don't take Isaiah 53 as speaking of the same person as Isaiah 42. And even the Targum interprets it in a way of um, the suffering Israel and a deliverer who they say is the Messiah, because that's there from Isaiah 40 to uh, 53. Did he have a primary mission to Israel? Read Surah 2, Ayah number 40. He came to renew the covenant with Israel. And as for Isaiah 42, 49, 50, and then 52, 13 to 53, 12, in point of fact, they speak of one and the same servant. The servant of 49 is rejected by his own people, yet becomes a light to his nation. That is the servant who is beaten by his own people in 50, who dies for his own people in 53, and rises from the dead. And who is that? Muhammad? No. Jesus the Lord. Thank you. When you look, even the rabbinic commentators, and, and it's, it's fascinating, people that don't know Jewish tradition, they'll believe this rabbi, but this rabbi often contradicts or ignores Jewish tradition, especially when it undermines his argument. So, for example, Radak, one of the so-called big three rabbinic commentators, he says the servant in Isaiah 42 is, is the Messiah. The Targum, which is the ancient Jewish translation paraphrase of the Hebrew Bible into Aramaic, it identifies the servant there as the Messiah. Or for example, Isaiah 49 and 50, rabbinic commentaries say that's the prophet Isaiah himself or prophets in general. And then there are many rabbinic traditions that say the servant in Isaiah 52, 13 through 15 is the Messiah. Now, prepare for the shock. So in point of fact, you have rabbinic tradition saying Tovia Singer is wrong. I said, prepare for the shock. That there are two servants. <laughs> that there are two servants. There is the nation Israel as a whole. And there is the Messiah, the servant of the Lord. And then, as you said, Jonathan, but then as you go through other verses, Israel as the servant is guilty of sin. Israel, the servant, is in exile because of sin. Israel is in darkness and in need of a redeemer. The Messiah as servant does not suffer for his sins. Israel suffers for its own sins. The Messiah suffers for the sins of the people, dies on their behalf, and through his wounds, healing comes. The one servant in his need is in need of redemption. The other servant is the redeemer. The one servant is, is blind and dumb. The other servant comes to open the eyes of the blind and, 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 and to set the captives free. One is captive in bondage. The other comes to set the captives free. So what we are shouting out is read the context. Everybody read the context is our best friend. One more time. It's widely recognized by biblical scholars based on internal evidence. The servant described in Isaiah 42 is the same servant described as in Isaiah 49, which we just heard. He's also described in the 50th chapter and 52, 13 through 53, 12. Actually, Isaiah chapter 40 um, to 43 uh, to 53 is speaking about two servants. It's speaking about the suffering servant, which is Israel, and then it's talking about a deliverer. And as for Isaiah 42, 49, 50, and then 52, 13 to 53, 12, in point of fact, they speak of one and the same servant. How about a magic trick? that there are two servants, there is the nation Israel as a whole, and 
there is the Messiah, the servant of the Lord. La, 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 la. In point of fact, they speak of one and the same servant. La, 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 la. That there are two servants, they speak of one and the same servant. Come on, explain. You are cheating somebody. La, 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 la. I urge you to have the courage to follow the truth wherever it leads because the stakes are very high. You, you can't play word games. You, you can't play word games. They speak of one and the same servant. That there are two servants. That is not only adding to the Bible, it is twisting it and turning it upside down. And here we go. وَيَوْمَ نَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ نَقُولُ لِلَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا مَكَانَكُمْ أَنْتُمْ وَشُرَكَاؤُكُمْ فَزَيَّلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَقَالَ شُرَكَاؤُهُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ إِيَّانَا تَعْبُدُونَ فَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ إِن كُنَّا عَنْ عِبَادَتِكُمْ لَغَافِلِينَ هُنَالِكَ تَبْلُو كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا أَسْلَفَتْ وَرُدُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ مَوْلَاهُمُ الْحَقِّ وَضَلَّ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَفْتَرُونَ